Hey Internet, World of Everlasting Dropkick here. We got a question about uh, the Apocrypha, uh, a book that maybe looks like this. Uh, it can also uh, look like this. I have a couple of copies. And why this book uh, of writings from between the Old and the New Testament is quoted by C.F.W. Walther, uh, an early leader, president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, in his evening lectures on law and gospel as support for the need for purity of doctrine. And so why are we quoting this non-biblical book as proof of doctrine? Well, first off, in the history of proving doctrine, we do recognize as sola scriptura of people that there are tiers of authority. So, Sola Scriptura, the Bible alone is the foundation, but because it is ultimately true in a way that we can hear, believe, and confess it, that means men have the ability as Christians to also speak this God-given truth, and that's tested against the Bible, but can also be its own sort of authority. This is what the Lutheran Confessions do then become for the Lutheran Church, a, a, a secondary authority by which we know whether or not we're saying the same thing about what the Bible says. Well, uh, the Apocrypha doesn't quite fit into that, uh, although the Apocrypha was almost and, and kind of is actually higher than the Lutheran confessions in the history of Lutheranism because it was considered to be sort of like the antilegomena of the New Testament. The New Testament's got a couple of books that the early church spoke against. Normally when we interpret the New Testament, we would have those be kind of secondary authorities even within the canon of ultimate authority of scripture. And the Apocrypha was seen by the Reformation era as the the Antilegomena of the Old Testament. These are books written largely by a Jewish people post-exile. Uh, they've never really been considered inspired and inerrant by Lutherans, but they were considered valuable, uh, mostly trustworthy, and useful for affirming what had already been proven by other passages of Scripture. So it's like a secondary amen to what the Scriptures actually say. And did you know, it's not just the Roman Catholics who have it in their Bible. It was in almost every Bible ever printed until the translations into English, for some reason, started cutting it out in the 1800s, 1900s. I've heard a little rumor that actually happened to save money on the pages uh, for Bibles to be sent overseas after translating. I don't know if that's true, but I do know it's a very late Protestant reality to just entirely reject these books and not trust them at all, as Walther, writing in the 1800s, shows a German theologian using, using Luther's German Bible. For him, it was actually in the Bible. It just wasn't on the same level as Genesis or Matthew. I don't know if he would have called it Scripture. He would have called it the Antilegomena. Now, I got a confession to make. I've never actually read the stinking thing, so I can't really speak to its truth at all, but I do know that fathers who know much more than I read it and didn't find anything particularly wrong with it and found it useful as a tertiary, a secondary, or third level authority to help affirm what they already knew because the scriptures had surely said it. That's kind of a helpful thing when you have multiple levels of authority. It helps us say it more in different ways, and the truth is all the more clear. Hope that helps. Thanks for tuning in. We're World of Everlasting Dropkick. We'll catch you guys in the future. Bye-bye.